Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's LT, and I need to buy a new set of tires for ugly trucks since I destroyed mine doing a burnout at the Truck Invasion Show. Which means it's time to get back to work. So we're doing another customer build. We're kicking it off today. If you're a subscriber to the channel, you'll probably recognize this one. It's a 93 Ford F-150. And the project we did on it last time is we built a custom exhaust. Uh, we went two and a half inch into single three inch. We put a Venom 250 muffler on there. Sounds pretty cool, I think. Um, it's a single cab short box four wheel drive. And because it has a stock 351 Windsor under the hood, you might've been wondering like, why did we go through all that effort to build a custom exhaust on something that doesn't make, well, hardly any horsepower? And the answer is because, well, the plan all along was to add a lot more horsepower. In fact, we're adding 268 horsepower. We're over doubling the power of this stock 351. And so to do that, well, we needed a cool and a higher flow exhaust than the stock parts would allow. So that's what we're starting today is we're adding a bunch of power to this F-150. Now the long-term goal for this build, just to kind of give you guys the, the vision that we're shooting for, we're kind of going for like, I'm gonna call it like an OBS Ford Raptor build. So we're going a little bit longer travel. We're doing a solid axle up front. We're gonna have coilover suspension with a link style up front. We're gonna do Deaver long travel leafs out back. It'll be on roughly a 35 inch tall tire. It's gonna look really cool, kind of call it like a pre-runner Baja Raptor style. And obviously to get there, we need to have a whole lot more power than what we're putting down. Or I guess no one really needs more power, but it's just, everyone wants more power so that's what we're going to be doing today now we're actually not going to be using this engine here like i said this is a 351 windsor i believe in these years they used a roller cam in the truck motors not positive on that but we're going to be replacing this although we are going to be sticking with a ford engine and we are going to be sticking with a tall deck windsor except we're going a few more cubes than 351 we're going with a blueprint engines 408 stroker now this guy uh, has got forged pistons, aluminum heads, got a roller cam, and the final numbers, they provide a dyno sheet with all these engines that they build. 468 horsepower at 5,500 RPM, 507 pound-feet at 4,100. So you can tell it's got a really strong mid-range, builds a lot of power up top. And just to kind of compare it to the stock numbers, you know, stock with engine made 200 horsepower and 310 pound-feet. That's the stock 351 underneath the hood of this truck right here. So yeah, we're adding 268 horsepower and that's gonna definitely wake this thing up. Now, in terms of engine control, we're actually not gonna be using the stock multi-port EFI, the EEC4, whatever they used to control these. Um, they're a speed density setup and they're just not, even if you tune them, you, you burn custom chips and all that good stuff, they're just not a great EFI platform. So instead, the owner elected to go with a Holly Super Sniper Stealth. I believe that's what this one is called. It's the Stealth because it looks like the 4150. And it's the Super Sniper, it has a lot of cool controls and stuff like that on it. Um, I think the size of the injectors in here will support, I have no idea, I'll put it up on the screen. It's probably like six or 700 horsepower. More than we'll have here, uh, we got some, ceramic coated headers on there just kind of for mock-up. I'll have to change the oil pan and a few other things on the accessory drive around, but that's what we're starting today. We're gonna to be removing the old engine so we can install this big stroker motor. And I think it's gonna sound awesome. It's got a cool cam in it. It's gonna really wake up this F-150 and give it plenty of power to work with all the off-road goodies that we have coming at a later date. So anyway, um, that's the vision for the build. Nearly 500 horsepower, over 500 pound-feet of torque. So let's get started by taking this old engine out.
All right, guys, so I wrapped up the engine removal last night at about seven o'clock and I came to one conclusion rather quickly. I need to get some sort of a swamp cooler or AC out here in the shop because it was 100 degrees outside last night and the sun actually beats down on that wall right there and there's no AC in it. Um, so that wall is probably honestly like 100, 110 degrees because it just it gets all that heat from the sun and then it heats up here in the shop. So anyway, it was really, really hot. Make sure you drink plenty of water if you're working in conditions like this. And I'm not complaining. I mean, I guess I am complaining, but anyway, uh, the engine fought me a little bit coming out, but it is ready to start doing some cleanup work. These Fords, they tend to leak a lot. I guess all old trucks do, but we get a big, massive collection of grease and dirt and grime right there. So I'll have to do a lot of cleanup work. I don't know if I'm really going to do any sort of painting or anything like that, because then it's like, where do you stop? Because once you start cleaning and painting one thing, the next thing you know, the body's going to be off, the frame's going to be at the powder coater, and then you've got a complete build. And I just, I mean, I don't think this is the project for this. This is an off-roader. It's not about looking pretty, it's about functionality. So uh, I'll just get all the cleanup work done, get all the gunk and grease off because you can't have that. Um, and then we'll start transferring a few parts over from one engine to the other. There's a couple things that we're gonna have to change. The 408 was shipped with a front sump oil pan and it had a front dipstick. Uh, that's just kind of probably for like an older 60s or 70s car. The F-150 uses a rear sump, so we're going to swap oil pans. And then I need to plug off the dipstick hole in the front timing cover. I think I'll just tap that and put some NPT or like an NPT plug in there. And then the, the 351 that came out, it has an oil dipstick on the back right there. And this new block has the little provision right there. It's not drilled all the way through yet, but it started. So I'll just punch that the rest of the way through. Um, and then we'll put our dipstick on through the manifold, just like it does on the stock engine. Other than that, um, we're gonna be using our existing accessory bracket. We'll put everything new on there, you know, new water pump, new alternator, new power steering pump and all that good stuff. Um, so all that hopefully should bolt on without any problems. And then let's see what else. I was going to mention how easy this engine was to pull out in terms of wiring. Um, you see this one plug right here. This basically has every electrical connection on it. You know, the injectors, all the sensors and stuff like that all goes through this one plug. That's all you need to remove. Now, if you had like a 93 Chevy, for example, with a TBI 350 in it, you'd have to remove every sensor or every connection on the sensors on the engine because on the Chevys, the wiring harness goes into the passenger compartment on the passenger side and on the driver's side. So it's just kind of a pain to leave the wiring harness on a Chevy engine when you pull it. But on this Ford, I mean, pretty much everything stayed right on there. I mean, you did have a, let's see, there's a starter wire, a ground battery cable, obviously the fuel lines, you've got to disconnect those, but that's all like that Ford quick connect style. So we pop those off. There's a ground wire up here, a couple of vacuum lines and the cooling hoses. But for the most part, all the wiring and stuff just stays on the engine right there, which does make it a little bit easy. Um, I did fight getting this separated from the transmission, and it seems like every time I work on a Ford, I have this problem. I don't know why, um, but it's probably just the tight tolerance between the snout of the converter and the crankshaft right here, because it seems like they stick in. I got all the four studs removed, and that doesn't help any because um, if you had a bolt, you could take the bolt out and then maybe start spinning the converter, but when the studs are in there, uh, that hole actually you can't actually spin the converter so I fought with it forever and it, towards the end I was just kind of giving up on it actually coming out and as much as I hate to do it I figured the torque converter would probably just stay stuck in the flex plate till I pulled the motor out but luckily it actually dislodged itself somehow I ended up just putting my hands on the engine stand or the cherry picker and put my feet on the bumper and just cranking back on that thing. Um, it wasn't going anywhere, but then all of a sudden, pop, it just came right out and we were good to go. So I'm um, thankful that came out because I hate pulling the converter out. That could mess up the front seal or something in the pump there. So anyway, uh, engine is out. We need to transfer a few things over and do some cleanup work. Um, oh, speaking of cleanup, by the way, totally different subject. If you guys are anywhere near Utah and if you want a 14 bolt full floating rear axle, let me know. I've got it for sale on Facebook Marketplace for like 500 bucks, but make me an offer. I just want to get this thing gone. It's from the 99 Suburban. It is a 410 open differential drum brake axle. Uh, and it's 65 inches hub to hub in case you guys are swapping into something and you want to know the width. So anyway, um, let me know. I'll consider pretty much any offer. I just want it gone. It's heavy and it's in the way. So um, that's going to bring this video to a conclusion. I want to say thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. Drop a comment down below and let me know what you think about this project. 
because when this thing is done, we'll, you know, it'll be a totally awesome machine. Like I said, we're kind of going for like a first gen or a, I don't know what gen these are, but like a OBS Ford Raptor. And I think that would be really cool. A little bit more power, long travel suspension, smooth ride off-road, 35s. Uh, it's going to have super duty axles on it, coilovers, Deaver long travel springs out back. I think I kind of went over a lot of that. So anyway, um, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of that stuff. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you next time.